So about eight months ago, my wife and four kids and I were in Turkey and we went on a little family vacation and it was really a blessing and a time of refreshment and we got to have a really uh, wonderful time enjoying each other and uh, seeing part of the world we'd never seen before. And while we were on that trip, uh, I carried my youngest son, Abraham, for many, many miles, and my arm started to hurt really bad. And it's when we got home from that trip that I went to, I decided to go to the doctor because my right arm was really bothering me, and there was a little bump there, and the Turkish doctor, uh, we were living in Turkish, in Turkey for the last five years, and the Turkish doctor said, oh, I don't think it's anything. You probably just pulled a muscle. And I'd also been exercising quite a bit at the time and lifting weights. And, and I had noticed sometimes when I was doing preacher curls that I would get a sharp pain, like a shooting kind of nerve pain occasionally in my right arm. But I didn't really think much about it. And so we waited a couple months more, or maybe a month and a half or so, and the, sw the spot in my arm kept getting bigger. And so we decided that I'd go back to the doctor. And this time the doctor was like, wow, that should have gone away by now. Uh, we better do a, an MRI. And when they did the MRI, uh, there were, we found the startling news that it looked like a tumor. And the tumor, uh, he said he didn't think it was cancerous, but that it could be, but it was pretty large. It had grown to 11 centimeters by 5 centimeters, and it needed to be taken out because it was pinching my nerve, and it was going to be a pretty serious surgery. Well, long story short, we, we did the surgery in Turkey. It was pretty rough, um, but the Lord helped us through it. And we got the news back uh, about a week and a half after when the whole tumor was tested that about three quarters of the tumor was not cancerous, but the, the end of the tumor was cancerous. And it, they said it was a pleomorphic sarcoma. And that was a shock to us. And so we came, we decided to come home for further treatment in America. And when we got here, they retested the, the tumor and said, yeah, that was correct. It was a pleomorphic, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. And apparently those are, it's, that's pretty nasty stuff. And, and the doctor told me, he said, this is, this is bad probably need to do another surgery and possibly take off your arm and eventually they decided it was too late for all that and that they would just do radiation and so they did 35 rounds of radiation and tested me three months after that and there was no evidence of disease anywhere and we were excited about that and then three month fast forward three months more and I went in for a, another scan. So they scan you every three months uh, in the early stages. And the doctor said, well, there's, there's no cancer in your arm, but uh, your lungs are full of tumors. And he said, it's, uh, it's terminal. And so that was a shock for me and my wife, but apparently with sarcomas that happens very often um, and so that's where we're, we're at today the diagnosis hasn't changed the doctor said it would be a miracle if I lived um, one doctor said I'd probably only live three more months from now another doctor said maybe five and they're trying a few experimental drugs but they said they doubted any of it would work so um, that's where we're at right at this moment. That's what our family's been going through. And I forgot to mention also, right when I got the diagnosis for my arm, um, our fifth child, uh, James, was born in Turkey. 
And so, but thankfully, through all of this, the Lord has preserved us. It's, it's been hard. It hasn't been easy at all. But by His grace, our faith hasn't wavered. Our hope has remained firm in the world to come. And, and one of the most difficult things, of course, is, is thinking about my wife and my kids. And, and they're such a precious, precious gift. And just having to trust the Lord that if He, if it, if he chooses to, to take me, that He'll take care of them. And that even though it's been my role to shepherd them, that if he takes me, he'll, he'll fulfill that. And that has been hard. But that is only the bit, you know. I said to a friend recently, one of my friends from high school, who's an unbeliever, who knows my life story, he called me, I haven't heard from him in years, his name's Christian Delatore. And we used to skateboard together and get in trouble together. And he called me and he told me what had been going on in his life and how he has no hope and just there his life is full of fear and pain. And he's been an alcoholic and even homeless in Denver for years. And he's just so desperate. And he said, I don't understand, like, how you could get cancer and die, and your life has been so, he's like, you're just such a good guy, you know, because he's seen how the Lord changed me. He just doesn't understand how to explain that. He doesn't have the right uh, theology to, to get what's really going on. He just thinks I'm a better person than him, which isn't true. I've just been a person that received a lot of grace but what's interesting is I was like wow if I die this year I will have lived 15 years about approximately 15 or 16 years knowing Christ and they have been the most amazing blessed years um, that I think anyone could live. And I just realized that I wouldn't want to live a hundred years apart from Christ. I'd rather live 15 with Him and go to see Him. And it just showed me how the Lord has really done an amazing work in my heart and in my life. And He's blessed me so much with knowing Him and knowing His people and the family He's given me all the blessings that I have benefited from knowing him and being privileged to serve him, getting to go to Turkey, getting to know the Turkish people and understand that culture. It's just been a gift and uh, it's a privilege that not many people get to be a part of things like that and wouldn't give it up for anything, not for long life or anything else.